Thanks for coming. I, I, I realize that many of you are just looking for good seats for Mike's talk next, and, and that's okay. Uh, I can assure you that how, no matter how many word camps you've been to, you probably won't have ever heard a talk like this before. Not that it'll be good, but it'll be very different. Oh, sorry, wrong talk. <laughs> Got to remember, this is my first. This is my first word camp. No, that really was intentional, but it was kind of fun. Um, just to tell you a little bit about my, I guess, WordPress origin story. I started. Uh, I started blogging in 2001. 2001. Oh, sorry. Um, using a product called Radio Userland that uh, Dave Weiner wrote. Dave's the guy who depending on who you believe, created the RSS format. Um, it was programmable, it was scriptable, it was wonderful. I mean, I used uh, Mac's uh, computers and did a bunch of Apple Talk stuff, and user talk was very similar, so it was kind of fun. I've been playing around with coding and scripting and stuff for a long time. Uh, from there, a friend, uh, someone else who was using that decided to write his own blogging program. It was written in Ruby on Rails. Oh, God, I really have to hold it this high? Oh, my. Sh Sorry. Um, it was written in Ruby on Rails. I played with that for a little while and decided, you know what? I don't really like working on the back end of something. Let's try and get something else that, that I don't have to play with so much. And there was WordPress, and it was, uh, it was getting a lot of traction. This was 2007. And I looked at it and like, when I look back for, for doing notes for this, like, I didn't realize I'd been using it for that long. But I guess I had. Um, I like the fact that I didn't have to really do anything with it. There was a lot of stuff out, out there to, to customize it, to make it look nice, and you know, I can do the occasional blogging, which is now really just occasional at times. Um, I was using another, um, another app called Voodoo Pad, which was kind of interesting. It was written by a guy named Brent Sim uh, Simon Simmons, uh, who also was on the uh, Manila U Radio Useland uh, uh, group. Uh, and it was just an application, a Mac, that uh, had a templating engine, and it was, uh, it was scripting in Lua. I'd never heard of Lua before this. God, why he chose that language, I have no idea. But I learned enough of it to figure out how to create a, uh, a home page. So it took multiple little, middle, little uh, notepads or, or categories that you had and would create your own little home page, and it basically created static sites, and that's what all these first couple ones did. Played with Blossom for a while. That was a Perl script, uh, and it pulled in Markdown, which was fun. The um, when I started with WordPress, I knew that PHP was a scripting language. That's about it. The uh, I everything I've learned on PHP is through Google and reading a lot. Google is definitely your friend. If you haven't, you know, if you haven't brushed up on your Google full foo, you need to. The, um, as I was using it for a while, I, was, I found out, like most of us do, hey, you know, I'd like to tweak this just a little bit, and wow, well, it would really be great if I could add that kind of functionality to it. And so I gradually started figuring out themes and plugins and changing things around. Now, I wasn't a developer. I don't really consider myself a developer. I mean, you know, it's clearly not my day job. I do this because it's fun. I mean, which kind of is weird at times because everybody else here, or a good chunk of the people here, do this as a job to make a living. And I'm like, okay, more power to you. <laughs> um, I, at times I wish, I, at, at times, it's, you know, it's a, lot of, it's a lot of fun to do things you enjoy, but, uh, you know, I find myself doing it on weekends, late at night, other times when I actually have some free time. Um, and what I found is, is you have to find, when you're learning, you have to find the best way it is for you to learn how to do this. I mean, for me, I found hacking at people's code was the easiest, because I'd see how they did it, I'd see the format they did, and you know, you'd look at all sorts of fun things and figure it out. Um, your workspace is very important. This is my workspace. <laughs> it's, it's not quite conducive to using a computer most of the time. Um, but there's something to be said for going to work in your pajamas. Gotta tell you, it's fun, it's interesting. There are several aphorisms we have in, uh, in surgery uh, the, uh, that a lot of them are very relevant to other things. Kiss, keep it simple, stupid. 
you know, they're the, the human body is a vastly moving organism. And so the fewer things you can do to it to make it right, the better off you are. The, uh, it's, uh, I look at it sometimes as the same thing with coding. The fewer things you can do to make your stuff work, the better off you are. Don't modify core. We'll say that again later too. But I found that you know, the best plugins are the ones that uh, do it easy, do it better. The enemy of good is better. And we'll talk about that later. Should you really do that? Or as uh, Matt Cromwell said earlier, just because I can do something, should I do something? Learn from others. You can learn good from others. You can learn other things like what Avada looks like when you try to change from it. You are the captain of the ship. I can't tell you how many times they tell us this in the operating room. But if you, uh, if you are a solo developer or you work with just a couple uh, different people and you're the one doing all the coding, it's your code. You're the one who's, uh, who's responsible for it. Keep it simple. The, uh, as I said, the fewer moving parts, the better off you are. Just simple things. Some of the best plugins I like, no interface, few lines of code, they do one thing, you turn it on, and it just works. The, uh, and that falls into the, the, you know, one of the four uh, fundamental core beliefs in WordPress is decisions, not options. So try to make things as simple as you can. I know I don't always do this, but it really helps if you can keep it simple and keep your method, uh, your, your function, line, uh, function uh, length small and things like that. The enemy of good is better. It is better. Now, I'm not so sure this applies to code so much because I violate this one all the time in my stuff. I'm constantly looking at it, see if I can tweak it, see if I can make it better, see if I can make it more performant. Um, why? I, I don't know. That's me. <laughs> I just keep doing it. The, you really don't want to do this in medicine <laughs> because as you start doing more and more things, more and more things can go wrong. So I have to tell this to young surgeons all the time. Do you really need to do that, what you're doing right now? Because <laughs> you probably don't. That's not why they're here. Stop. But uh, as far as code goes, I'm, I always refactor it. I mean, I've recently changed a couple of plugins around so that they're, they, they will only work in 5.3 or better. Because I use namespacing, because it's easier. And it makes it easier to name my methods and name my functions and other things like that. I had a vascular surgery attending who drew this big circle on the, uh, on the chalkboard. It's like, has a problem. I can fix that problem. <laughs> Should I fix that problem? <laughs> because I'll tell you, sometimes people have problems you really don't want to fix or you really shouldn't fix. Um, sometimes people have things that they, they don't know what the problem really is. They just think that your plugin, your theme, is not doing what they want it to do. The, uh, where are we? Learn the good and the bad. I've told a lot of my you know, junior residents and everything else, you can learn what not to do as easily as you can learn what to do, especially in the operating room. Some consider me a fast surgeon. I tell people it's not about moving quickly. It's about moving efficiently. Because if you take fewer movements, fewer strokes, uh, you know, fewer things to do and solve a problem, time just doesn't seem to, to compile as much. I've seen surgeons who can't walk and talk and move at the same time. Have to keep telling the operating room techs, don't talk to them. <laughs> Tell them to be quiet. <laughs> Get through the case. Because at least in the operating room, if you're over two hours, you know, statistically, there are more bad things that can happen to you. Not that that means you can't go over two hours, because there's a lot of cases that just take longer. <coughs> uh, 
you're the captain of the ship. The, um, you know, most, most of the things we try to do, make your, you know, make it as simple as, as you can. I always try to, you know, I always try to, God, I hate white screening people's sites. And I, I tend to get a little paranoid about that, even if it means pushing out an update as soon as I figure it out, or if I've white screened my site without, and push out an update, and that's really bad. But um, I hate doing that, but basically, it's your code, you're responsible, is essentially what it means. The, uh, and you, know, you should try and reuse your code as, as much as you can, because the simpler you can make things, the easier it is to fix, the easier it is to correct. Uh, as far as what to do, that's easy. I mean, Pippin Williams said it. Pippin Williamson said it best. Scratch your own itch. Find the problem that you have that you want to solve, and fix it. You didn't even turn it toward me. Tools of the trade. Everybody uses whatever they want to use. I've found a couple things that I like that I uh, that work good for me. Desktop server. Can't say enough good things about it. Talk to Greg out front. It's wonderful. Uh, one of the first plugins I wrote, <laughs> I was doing some cowboy coding on, my, on, on one of my sites from Barbados on an iPad on a flaky internet connection. And you sit there and you white screen it and think, oh God, now I've got to fix this thing. <laughs> Fortunately, there are enough tools out there to do that on an iPad, but it's not exactly ideal. It would have been much easier if I could just white screen it something locally, but I didn't. Um, got into PHP Storm as an IDE. That's, uh, if you haven't gotten into P uh, to an IDE, Coda, PHP Storm, Sublime Text, find one. It will make your life easier, guaranteed. It doesn't really matter what you use. Um, if you're not using version control system, <laughs> when you leave here, Check it out. It has to be the next thing you're doing because it is a great way to fix the mistakes that you put in your code and go back and say, you know, I remember three versions ago or eight versions ago that I did something that, you know, it worked. And where was that code that I just deleted six versions later? Um, I, for some things, I, I use the command line. For most, I'm like, you know, I don't really need to learn that. I'm not a this isn't my livelihood, so I like the GUI stuff. So Tower, wonderful app. It's what I use. Um, it's, uh, it's, a, um, it's an interface to uh, Git repository. In this case, uh, GitHub or Bitbucket. Uh, I think they also do Beanstalk, too, and maybe they're coming up with some more soon, I think. Uh, as far as finding and answering questions, Google. You know, put an issue up on GitHub if the, if the source is up on GitHub, wonderful. WordPress forums, ask questions. I will tell you, put as much information in the question as you want. I can't tell you how many issues I, I, you know, people put up there that says, it doesn't work. I'm like, really? I don't understand why. Works for me. Of course, you learn a lot of patience doing that because you can't really say that to somebody. And so that's why. Half the time, I'll, I just let, the, let it percolate there for a, a day or so until I really don't want to answer it, until I do. Uh, as far as uh, scratching your, your own itch, find a problem you want to solve. You know, it may be as simple as, you know what, on all the pictures of my, on all the images on my site, I would really like to put a frame, I'd really like to put a drop shadow. Do that, you can do, you can do things like that without even creating custom child themes. I'm a big fan of you know, site-specific plugins um, that uh, I have for, for certain things because you know, things like that, I'm going to change. I mean, it's not gonna, I don't, it doesn't really matter what theme I have. Um, I'm going to change it. Someone, I found some, some snippet of code that someone that will automatically link a, a someone's Twitter handle if you put it in the, in the site. Now, that, that's, that doesn't belong in, a, in the theme. Well, it could go in the theme. But, uh, and it doesn't necessarily belong in its own plugin because it's about three lines. So I have a couple of you know, site-specific plugins that you know, I'll throw some code in and even some CSS in on some things and just load it separately. 
the, um, if you have an itch, you have to find, does the solution already exist for that? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. Sometimes that solution isn't quite right. And you'll find yourself having to modify it. That's what forking is for. The, um, I found I had a problem. I was having these one-off little plugins that I was writing for a couple of different sites that I made, you know, one for my kid's Boy Scout troop and one for our hospital's medical staff and, you know, my own and stuff. And I'm like, okay, I made this. Now I'm in transmit and I'm SFTPing it up to all these sites and I make another little change and, oh, God, I got to go up, SFTP it up again and delete the other one, add the other one back and it got to be a pain in the butt. I mean, seriously. So I'm like, there's got to be a better way to do this. So you go search. Again, Google's your friend. You'll find some solutions. You'll find a lot of solutions. Some of them just aren't that right. They don't hit, fit your use case. They just may not work for you, in which case, get to do it yourself. In talking about plugin development, if you're the lead on the project, you get to determine what the scope of it is. Some people will sit there and say, you know what? I'd like you to put this feature into it. And you're like, um, no, it's not really designed for that. There's other ways to do that. I, <laughs> I've had, I, had, uh, I had one plug-in, probably one of the simplest ones I ever put up on the repo, I'll talk about a little later. But it, all it does is, is reformat a, um, an ICS feed. Uh, and to make it work with Outlook, because Outlook is screwy. Sorry for all those Outlook fans, but Outlook is a little screwy at times. It does one thing, does it reasonably well, pretty simple. I get this thing, well, since you're doing this, I'm really upset and I'm only gonna give you four stars because your plugin doesn't do that. I'm like, okay. If that's what, if that's what you want, that's what you want. Always ask questions, how can I make it better? How can I improve things? Constantly, I'm constantly looking things up if I have issues about things or questions. Codex is good, core is your friend. I mean, Codex will give you some level of, okay, this is the format of the function and, and, the, and the method, but you know, looking up in core sometimes is absolutely necessary to say, okay, this is where it exists. This is the context of where it is and how it's working. And honestly, nothing beats that. And it gives you a new appreciation for how the stuff is working. Core is your friend. So I found out with uh, several of, uh, of writing these plugins is uh, I had to use Transience API. Transience API is not bad. Um, it's actually pretty, pretty good, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Um, and then there's Settings API. And if any of it, every single time I change something or add a setting, I have to look at it. I have to look at the code I've written before for it that works. And then I have to keep going back because, wow, I put that in, okay, what's that part of the add settings field and why isn't it showing up? Um, actions, filters, uh, absolutely one of the best ways to start uh, improving your plugin, improving your, uh, your code. Uh, making it easy for other people to use it, to kind of add those special little things that they may want to do to it. The interesting thing is, is if you actually look at the source for actions and filters, it's pretty close to the same thing, um, which, is, uh, which is really one of those interesting things in core. The .org repo. So those are some of the um, plugins I have in the .org repo, the Outlook import fix. Uh, <laughs> all right, you can see I got into a rut. I really like the events calendar plugin for Modern Tribe. No, I have no affiliation, don't work for them, work with them. Um, the, uh, we'll go out of order. The Outlook, the Outlook import, if you export an ICS file, Outlook will want to create a new a new calendar for each one, as opposed to putting it in your default calendar. Well, there was one single little line of code that made it do that, or with the, with the way its standard ICS file comes out that made it do that. But removing it makes it work. 
So I removed it. Simple little plugin. I don't think I've ever had to update it. Probably have, but probably didn't have to. Um, I got started putting it with the category colors ca uh, ca uh, plugin. Um, it was fun. I was looking at, uh, I was following their forum board, and people were talking about, uh, oh, how can I colorize my uh, my categories and make my calendar look prettier and this and that. And they put up a um, a tutorial, and I'm like looking at this tutorial and thinking, well, who's going to really want to put all the CSF, CSS together for every single color or category they have, thinking, you know, that's pretty iterative. <laughs> I can do that. I thought I could do that. So I did, and I, you know, as it, as it grew, it was pretty simple. Um, they had a really nice API to, 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 bring their, to, to bring my settings basically into their plugin settings file. As just an extra tab, it integrates very nicely. I'm really hoping they just take it over one day. But um, it was fun. I mean, in most of the problems I've ever had with it, other than them changing category classes every once in a while, they've been really good about adding hooks for me where I need them. Um, it's, boy, the crazy things people do with CSS on their sites. Where they put it, when they, when they, uh, when they uh, load it, how they load it. Like, you know, you have inline CSS right around this thing. There's nothing I can do for you. This is where the problem is, though. <laughs> have fun trying to fix it. Um, the, uh, the pro alarm. God, dirt simple. In the, pro, uh, in the pro plugin, you can add an additional field. And um, I had a, previous to this, uh, Outlook, was, uh, Outlook was an interesting beast. It was putting out really crappy uh, time zone uh, data uh, in their ICS uh, field. And so I'd written an Apple script from getting email to uh, fix that. The, uh, which led me to the alarm field because I just looked back where the RFC was for an ICS file and, okay, this is where you put an alarm field in and this is how you do it. And so I wanted, if I exported it and I put it in my, uh, in my calendar, I wanted it to beep for me at you know, 15 minutes till the event. These silly things. Uh, so I did that. It wasn't so bad. Uh, the user CSS is really interesting. I mean, it's, it's a silly little thing, but it, it basically, it will load, if you put your, they have a, a place where you can put your, um, your CSS in a specific file, and this basically loads it last, because sometimes if you have pro, it will, on the normal circumstances, load the events calendar stuff first, and then it loads the profiles. So if, if you just have it normal in there normally, it's going to get overwritten if you have, and it's just not going to work. But this basically takes the file and, and, and loads it last, so it, it doesn't get over, it doesn't, it isn't selected out. Um, add custom header images. That's the, you know, that's, uh, that was an interesting one. I was like, uh, you know, I don't want, I didn't want a slider. Um, I wanted something just if the page load changes, okay, the header image changed. It wasn't that, wasn't, I wasn't looking that hard to do it. Yeah, I Googled around. I found some guy had written a tutorial on it. Like, cool. I, you know, I can make this into a plugin. And I sent him an email and asked, hey, I'd like to put this into a plugin. Is that okay with you? Because I figured might as well be nice and ask. And yes, they are properly credited in the plugin. Um, son of a gun, if the thing doesn't work in 2016 without anything, without any <laughs> modifications. I mean, you know, it, it basically started working when, what was it, 3.8? When, they, when you could randomize the header in 2013, I think it was. Um, and it just, you know, you select a random image, you put it up in a, on a you put the, uh, the image in a, uh, in a page that you can even make private so nobody actually looks at it, and it'll just pull a random image out. For those of you who don't know, I wrote a plugin, uh, a plugin called GitHub Updater. The, um, my goal, I was using GitHub a lot. My goal was to make it easier to update a plugin to multiple sites from this single repository. And I wanted it to look just like it came out of the dashboard. So you really couldn't tell the difference between what was in the repo 
and what was not. The idea is to work within core as much as you can, which really helps you to keep it future-proof. The other thing I wanted to do was update both plugins and themes. Up till then, there was some code that would work on one and some code that would work on the other, but not much that worked on both of them. The, um, my requirements. I wanted the lowest barrier to entry I could get. All these other plugins had to include a file, you know, had to include an updater file, had to, you know, have 16, 20 lines of code to create the, um, the config for your specific plugin. So I'm like, okay, how can I parse the plugin, grab that data, create that data, so that all you have to do is put one little header in there. The branch header, optional. Optional if the branch is master, but optional. So, just one. The, uh, I think that was, the, that was one of the best things. I mean, I, I, I was using um, Joey Kudish's uh, uh, class. I want to say it's WordPress GitHub updater something. Sorry. Sorry, Joey. It's been taken over by uh, Cone Jacobs at Radish Concepts uh, recently. And I stopped, I mean, the first thing I did with this was make it a plugin instead of a class because I didn't want to have to add all this stuff to every single plugin I did. So I did that and had the, the config file in each one, and it worked, but it wasn't as clean as I would have liked. I mean, my goal was is I didn't want you to have to add extra cruft to your own stuff, to your own files, to your own plugins, to your own themes. Um, that was some prior art. A company called CodePress, I want to say in Netherlands or Scandinavia somewhere, had created another plugin, GitHub Plugin Updater. I couldn't use that name then. Um, and it, I thought, did a, nuts, did a cleaner job of, of, of with updating with the updating code. And so I borrowed heavily from it. It's changed a lot since then. I have a PR from May of 2006 on that code so that it works with more than one plugin. Because if you update more than one plugin on there, it fails the second one. It was like a one-line fix. It was nothing. But clearly it got me to the point where they're really not updating this code. <laughs> the uh, theme updater came from um, University of Central Florida. Uh, they had had some theme updating code, uh, which we'd uh, borrowed heavily from. Uh, and uh, also, uh, Morris Boss, Seth Karstens, wrote a lot to, uh, on, on one of his frameworks to, to do theme updating. Five minutes. <laughs> the, um, so, oops. So I, um, I got it fixed, I got it working, work with plugins, work with themes, submitted to the .org, rejected. I was like, okay, why? Now, so that kind of, you know, I'd, I hadn't met Mika or Pip or Otto before, still haven't met Otto. Um, but, you know, had some email exchanges with them back and forth. They were very good. I mean, you know, they were very nice, very polite, said, okay, this is the problem, this is the thing. Essentially, it boiled down to, we don't want to support the promotion of an outside repository. And that's okay, I mean, I can live with that. And I understand it, because .org basically is a hosting repository. Curated, but a hosting repository. Um, there, uh, <coughs> there are other ways to do this, and, well, strike that. The um, current state, I, I like to think it works seamlessly for plugins and themes. I really like to think that it works great in the dashboard, that if, if used properly and set up without some of the options that I've added to it, you can't really tell that it's not, that the, the, the plugin isn't coming from .org. It, it just looks the same, it works the same. You click on view details, it works. Um, it works with single and multi-site, works with GitHub, Bitbucket, and GitLab, public and private repos. 
although getting Bitbucket private repos was kind of hard to figure out. And I understand they're taking away the basic auth on HTTP sometime soon, so I, I may have to figure that one out again. It, if you have a readme text file in it that it parses the readme text file, it'll throw that up in the view details if you have questions. It, it has a rollback for themes for the last three themes or so. That's Seth's doing, because I couldn't get that figured out. Originally, when I wrote this plugin, had no settings. It was just, here it is, turn it on. If the plugin or theme you're working with works with it, it works with it. There wasn't anything else to do. And then we got the private repos. <laughs> and I really couldn't ask people to put their Bitbucket uh, uh, user and password in there. Um, it allows for a remote installation of plugins or themes now and uh, branch switching, which is kind of a reinstall almost, or just changing a branch if you've got a dev branch. Uh, and it integrates with uh, a couple of the remote uh, update services. That's it. That's where the plugin is. There have been at least 24 other people that have committed code other than me to it from PRs. And for everybody who's still paying attention, we have trivia time. I have two mugs with the logo. Who can tell me what the current version is? Tagged, released. 5.0.21? No. Oh, come on. Because the next question's harder. Nobody's looking this up. OK. Mm. When was the, f come on, it's all up there, by the way. When was the first commit? That's the harder question. No. Pardon me? No, no, when was the first commit to this plugin on GitHub? Was GitHub around in 2006? I mean, seriously, guys. Maybe I should ask this. Who actually uses it in this room? You know, it's, it's, one of, it's one of those really interesting things. It's up on GitHub. It's not in the repo. I don't monetize it. I put it out there because I like it. I use it. I have no idea how many people are using it. But you know what? It's translated into Arabic and Japanese and Spanish and, and French and some other, and German and stuff. And it's just kind of wild. All right, current version. Pardon me? Yes. Who said that? Come pick up your prize. We'll wait for the other one. OK, we'll get to there, because I'm sure I'm over. <laughs> Friend of mine said this, a guy named Claude Crockett. He's my father's age, but a surgeon. He says, no such thing as minor surgeries, minor surgery, only minor surgeons. And the way this kind of translate is communicate, Communicate, communicate. Something's going wrong with you or your client, talk to them. Make sure they understand you're having issues, you're having problems, so they don't expect issues or problems. About two weeks ago, I'm in the operating room, middle of the day. Yes, sir? 2013. Score. I'm in the operating room, middle of the day, doing an appendectomy, or starting to do an appendectomy. And I'm there, and there's an anesthesiologist and a CRNA, and I'm scrubbed and gowned and gloved, and I'm just kind of sitting and waiting. Um, young girl. And all of a sudden, I see them kind of being a little frantic, and I look over, and no one's saying anything. Next thing I know, I see the anesthesiologist grabbing this kit and taking a syringe and a needle and stick it in this girl's neck, in her throat. And I'm like, what are you doing? And he's like, I need to get a tracheostomy. We don't have an airway. I can't ventilate her. Now, for those of you, there's a difference between intubation, which is actually putting a tube in the right place, and ventilation. Ventilation is the actual air exchange, which means they're effectively holding their breath for as long as that happens. Brain cells don't like that very much, especially after about three minutes. And I looked at him and I said, 
I'm gown and gloved. I'm sitting here. I was like, uh, trauma surgeon, hello. He's like, here. Needless to say, we got an airway in her. I took her appendix out and gave her a tracheostomy, which she got to leave the hospital without. Um, but it could have all ended a little differently. I mean, you know, had I not been in the room, it could have been a little better, too, if they just said, hey, look, we're having issues. Perhaps you should get ready to do something. But no, they didn't, so they didn't communicate well. You're supposed to review us. They asked us to put this up there. So here it is. Oh, this is, this is who I am. Uh, I blog occasionally at thefragrance.com. My Twitter handle, the GitHub repo. My day job, I really am a trauma acute care surgeon. That's me. You probably, that's the avatar, so that's, that's me. I'm also the chief of staff at Desert Regional Medical Center, a level two trauma center in Palm Springs, California. It kind of keeps me busy. And I'm now a speaker. I've been a sponsor. It's been a lot of fun. And I got to scratch that off my bucket list recently. So I was really happy. <laughs> so honestly, if, if I could do something like that, anyone can. Believe it. All you have to do is be inquisitive enough to figure it out. Anyone have questions? I don't have time for questions, I'm sure. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> you know, Say's, Say's talk had all the puns in it. I, I'll, I'll leave those up to her. <laughs> You know, I've read Atul Gawande's book. It's a nice book. Um, there's some data now out to suggest that maybe they aren't all they're cracked up to be. You know, the idea is, is they take it from airline pilots who have checklists they go through one after the other, after the other, after the other. Um, and the idea is, is so you don't forget the mundane, the easy stuff. Uh, and, you know, in WordPress, you know, it's much more important being in, 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 you know, in the hospital, in the operating room and stuff to, to do things like that. I'm not sure you have checklists so much as uh, just lists of what I need to accomplish rather than, you know, your list wouldn't, wouldn't look like, okay, I have to turn on the computer. I have to make sure I have an internet connection. I have to, uh, you know, make sure my coffee is filled because coffee is important. Uh, and, I, and I can tell you that's usually my follow-up question to them. What were you trying to do? How did you do it? Can you show me a screenshot? I, I find when I do them, I probably don't have to ask them, but I can see it myself. There's an art to filing a bug report. There really is. Any other questions? Well, I'd like to thank all the, word ca uh, all the organizers of LA and the volunteers and everybody else who made this possible because it's a really nice event. They do a good job with it.